Russia's nuclear threat, China's involvement behind the scenes. The situation in Russia and Ukraine continued to escalate. On February 26, the Russian Ministry of Defense ordered an all-around attack on Ukraine, which Ukraine struggled to resist. Meanwhile, the U.S., U.K., E.U., and Canada took further action to remove Russian central banks from the SWIFT international payment system. On February 27, the Russian army entered Kharkiv, Ukraine's second-largest city. The fighting broke out in the city center. Ukraine sent a delegation of officials to talk with Moscow without any preconditions near the Pripyat River on the Ukraine-Belarus border. Putin claimed that due to unfriendly economic sanctions by Western countries, he ordered Russia's nuclear weapons and other deterrents to be put on high alert. Ukraine believes that Putin is trying to increase the bargaining card and put further pressure on the Ukrainian delegation. The United States and NATO have condemned Moscow as threatening and irresponsible. Dr. Xiaoxi Sean Lin, a U.S. veteran, political analyst and commentator, and member of the Committee on the Present Danger, China, noted that on February 24th, when Russia began to invade Ukraine, the war situation has changed, and China's rhetoric media has also changed significantly. In the beginning, there was a view that the military strength of Russia and Ukraine was very different, and Russia would achieve its goals in a flash. While China blocked anti-war speech on social media, it touted Russia and accused the Ukrainian government of many crimes. The Chinese embassy in Ukraine also issued a reminder on February 24th, saying that Chinese citizens in Ukraine can show their national flags to increase security. At the same time, they do not announce the evacuation of overseas Chinese. However, when the tide turned, the Ukrainian firmly resisted. Many countries also had sanctions against Russia and supported Ukraine. The China embassy in Uzbekistan immediately issued a warning telling the local Chinese to do not show their identities and display signs at will to reduce security risks. In China, social media Weibo, Douyin, and WeChat began to delete information about China's support for Russia on a large scale. Qin Peng, a current affairs commentator, highlighted that on February 27th, CCTV reported the war had turned into a stalemate. They also talked of peace value and raising funds to support Ukrainians. The U.S. called on China to condemn Russia. In a press briefing, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said, This is not a moment to be on the sidelines, and that Beijing should look at itself, and this is a moment to think about where you are in history. But is it possible for China to stand up and condemn Russia's invasion? Xiaoxi Shanlin said that a big mystery is whether Russia planned to invade Ukraine and whether it shook hands with China in advance, whether Beijing was a bystander or a behind-the-scenes participant in the Russian military's actions. In a New York Times report back in November 2021, the U.S. informed China of Russia's aggression plan and held six emergency meetings hoping China would do something to prevent the invasion. China rejected the U.S. request and even disclosed the info to Russia. There is also a question of China signing a large oil contract of nearly $80 billion with Putin before the war. Jin Peng, a current affairs commentator, concluded that observers believe that China regards Russia's invasion of Ukraine as a rehearsal of its invasion of Taiwan. There are also pro-CCP clamoring, Ukraine today, Taiwan tomorrow. But Russia's invasion of Ukraine is getting foiled, and Russia quickly fell into a state of very isolation. Now there is a reverse saying, today's Russia, tomorrow's CCP.